I've got five tips for you today to help you settle into France or any new country for that matter. My name is Patricia Brooks, and I am the founder of the Courage Catalyst and creator of the Carefree Expat Incubator Program. I help single women who have been aching to move to a foreign country, but fear and self-doubt and overwhelm have caused them to not make the progress that they want to. And I help them move into confidence and empowerment so that they can take the necessary steps and finally move to the country they've dreamed of forever and experience the kind of life they want there. In today's video, I am going to share with you five tips that will help you to integrate more easily when you first settle in a new country. And this video is in honor of the latest Carefree Expat Incubator member who on December 1st made her leap to France. And I'm over the moon excited for her. I can't wait to hear how things are going for her. So let's get started. So tip number one is be open and flexible. Now, when you move to a foreign country, there are going to be so many things that are new to you that are uncomfortable for you. And unless you are open and flexible, you're going to have a hard time of it. Let's be frank. You are going to have a hard time of it. The cultural differences alone are enough to create some unease in you. And being open to them and recognizing when you are bumping up against a cultural difference that's causing you some friction is really vital because the sooner you recognize that that's what's happening, you can say, okay, wait a minute, how do I want to experience this? And how can I move through this more easily? And how can I be more flexible in accepting this? I remember for a couple of years, I was frustrated and annoyed at lunchtime when I was ready to go do my errands at 11.30 or 11.45 and I'd look up and say, oh, it's almost lunchtime and I wanted to go to this store that was closed or when I go to the post office and now I've got to wait until 1.30 or 2 to do it and so I just wanted to get that thing done and that was a source of frustration for me. Had I recognized that sooner and made peace with that sooner, that resistance um, and that that frustration that I created, that would have gone away so much sooner. Now I plan, right? I look at my day. Oh yeah, I'm going to need to go to the post office and work to get myself up and out of the house much sooner so that I can take care of the things I need to earlier. Or if it's going to be in the afternoon, it's going to be in the afternoon, but I don't, I'm a little less spontaneous with things like that, but it helps to create um, the peace that I want to experience. The other thing about being open and flexible is work to have not only expat friends or English speaking friends, but friends who are French or who come from the country that you are in because your experience will be that much richer. And if you want to move abroad, you probably want to learn more about the culture and, and experience the culture. And that is a great way to do it. So that's another way of being open and flexible. And finally, around openness and flexibility, recognize that there is a different game that is being played in your new country. And the sooner you learn it, the sooner you embrace it, the sooner you have fun with it, the sooner you're going to feel less annoyed, less frustrated, have more peace and experience your new country the way that you want to. So. That's all I'm going to say about being open and flexible. It's huge. It helps you to have the kind of life you want to have. All right. So that's number one. Number two is be patient. Be patient with the administrative matters. Be patient with yourself. Okay. And things can go and run on a, a slower timetable here in France. You may submit paperwork and you might not get a response very quickly. And um, if you're used to a turnaround time being faster, that could be a source of frustration as well. I know that I have kind of overcorrected for that. I had my U.S. passport renewed at the, earlier this year 
And I gave them like three weeks to kind of handle it. And it was lost in the mail. It was being held because I don't know for whatever reason, but I didn't check. I should have checked so much sooner, but I was in the habit of being patient. But it, it helps on the other side when things are more slow moving and you're not necessarily waiting on the edge of your seat for something to arrive or for papers to be approved. All right. But patience also applies to being patient with yourself. I know that early on there were things that I didn't know how to do or that I needed to do certain things. For example, I went to a grocery store. This particular grocery store did not have scales at the cash register. So what that meant was I had to weigh my produce in the produce section. Only I didn't know that, right? So I went grocery shopping for the week and I put all of my things on the conveyor belt at the cash register and the checker starts checking them and then she gets to my produce and she's looking at them and she's looking for the labels. She's like, oh, there are no labels on these. And I'm like, what? Huh? Oh, you need to put weigh them and put labels on them in the produce section. So, of course, there are three or four people behind me in line. I've got to go past them with my three or four bags of produce to weigh these things. Right. It was mortifying. Uh, maybe I exaggerate, but it was very embarrassing to say the least. And um, when I was walking home from the grocery store, I over my head, I was kicking myself. I was saying, oh, we, that was that was so dumb. Why did you do that? Uh, you should have known better. But really, I shouldn't have because this was not the way things were where I came from. They have every grocery store has a, a place, a scale at the cash register. So this was new for me. And I found myself berating myself, kicking myself, raking myself over the coals, as I, I used to call it. And that wasn't doing me any good. That wasn't helping me feel good about my experience uh, in France, my new life in France. I was just getting started with. And so be patient with yourself. It is vital to do that in order to you know, have the resilience and the experiences that you want to have. All right. So that is number two. Number three is once you land in your new country, you're going to want to jump into activities pretty quickly, especially if you are not working a job outside of the house where you're going to have some sort of structure and routine and you're going to have a way of meeting more people. For me, my first couple of years here was a sabbatical. I wasn't working after having worked most of my life you know, in corporate. And so the problem for me with that was it was great. I could get up whenever I wanted to and go roam my new city and explore. And that was amazing. But there's only so many hours you are going to want to do that. And with the rest of the time, I found myself having too much time to think about what I had done, right? I had left a good paying job. I was living off of savings. I didn't know anybody in this new country. And it was really unsettling. And I found myself thinking about this more and more and questioning whether or not I'd done the right thing. I, a month in, I went on En Va Sortir, OVS, which is a meetup site. And I started to take on some activities, laughter, yoga, and going out for drinks with people. And that was great. But still, it felt like I needed something more, something more to entertain my days. And that was when I decided I was going to start my podcast. And I didn't know anything about podcasting. So I had to learn all of that. I had to get the equipment. I had to figure out what my topics were. I had to line up guests. So that really gave me a project to sink my teeth into and not feel like I was floundering or, and it created a place for me to stop or a way for me to stop thinking about all that I had done, the import of what I had done. This is great advice for you. Even if you do have a nine to five job that you are doing, you may want to meet people outside of your work. And so finding an activity that you are going to participate in on a regular basis can be really helpful to not feeling isolated. 
and feeling like you are making inroads and in integrating into your new country. Number four is something I have trouble with just in general, right? Not just in a, being in a new country, but it is ask for help if you need it. Now, moving abroad is taxing and sometimes emotionally it is too much to bear. And so if you find yourself feeling like you need some help, if you need therapy or counseling, ask for help and get it because that can help you to move through the things that you're feeling and so that you can get to that other side of that and have the quality of life that you want. So that's one sort of help, type of help that you may need to ask for um, and get. But another one is even with administrative matters, my first year here, I needed to set up a bank account. And to do that, I needed somebody to vouch for me, somebody to provide their identity card to help me get that set up. And my landlord was very helpful and instrumental in doing that and providing that help for me. But it was not easy for me to accept or ask for, but I did it. And so ask for help if you need it. The other final thing on asking for help is quite recently, I needed to ask a friend for help. I was heading up to Paris for Thanksgiving and the bus didn't arrive at the Perpignan train station until after my train would have left in the morning. And so that meant that I either have to park my car, pay for parking and pay 50 euros for a couple of days, or I could ask my friend who had offered years earlier for me to stay at his place if my train was too early for me to get to the train station by bus. And this time I took him up on it. And it was great because he had the opportunity to help me, but also it was great because it was another opportunity for us to socialize. Uh, we had a lovely dinner. Me, um, his girlfriend and I had this wonderful dinner and it just made it so much easier for me. And it was not a big inconvenience for him. So ask for help if you need it. Really vital, whether or not you are moving abroad or settling in a new place. I think this is good advice all around. The final thing I wanna say around get help is here in France, there is a service called France Service, which is, in all of the departments here, you can go to an office and have somebody help you with administrative tasks, certain administrative tasks. And this was something I didn't learn about until I went through my French civics class. And it was really interesting to learn that this existed. But a couple of months ago, when I thought I lost my wallet and all of my identity cards, I went over to the uh, Sioux Prefecture, which is where the France service office is in my community to get help. And I scheduled an appointment so that she could help me with getting those cards replaced. And fortunately, I found my wallet. I didn't have to go through it, but it was nice to know that there was somebody to help me with that. So um, ask for help if you need it is a really important lesson. You know, even if you are an independent person, it really helps to lighten the load. And then finally, learn the language. Even if you only know a few words and phrases, that can come really in handy because people who are in the country you're in really appreciate when people work to learn the language or use the language. Now, I would say go beyond just the basics because learning the language, speaking the language will help you with the other tips on this list, uh, asking for help. Now, had I followed through with the France service, I would have had to communicate all in French. And so if you're coming to a country and you need help and there's a service, but you don't speak the language or you don't have a better understanding of the language, that might be challenging. It helps with being open as well, because as I said, 
having expat friends, English speaking friends is nice, but to have a full or richer experience, having French friends or friends from the country that you are living in will give you that. But that's only accessible to you if you're communicating or able to communicate in that foreign language. So learn the language, start out with your basics, but then go beyond. I know I took a French class my first year here, and that was a great way to meet people. That was a great way for me to improve my French. And it's vital. It's vital. My level of French has helped me so much, helped me feel so connected in this place that could be so isolating. And so uh, very important to do. So there you have it. Five things that you should do when you are settling in France or any country for that matter. Which one of these do you think is the most useful tip? Let me know in the comments. So if you are a single woman and if you've been aching to live in a foreign country and for whatever reason, be it fear or self-doubt or overwhelm or not really knowing where to start has caused you to have slower progress than you'd like has stalled your progress and you really want to live this dream that you've been thinking about and dreaming about forever, then I'd love to have a conversation to see what is holding you back and hear more about your plans and if our working together could help you get there sooner. So click the link to my calendar in the description and schedule time on my calendar so we can have that conversation. I look so forward to meeting you. Now, that is all I have for you today. I hope this video has been helpful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe. That's all I have for you today. Bye for now.